Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome back to the channel. So I'm here at Chris's garage. Here I am. <laughs> <laughs> Today the plan for the Jeep is doing a little bit of uh, maintenance. It's not gonna be a full maintenance video. It's just oil change. I have to change out a tie rod because one of them went bad even though I changed it less than a year ago. I know most of you guys hated this, but I'm changing out the Fram finally. A lot of you guys were mad that I used the Fram, but on that video I was showing you how to do an oil change for cheap, you know? Be on a budget if you need to. I don't really know much other than the controversy that Fram isn't good. But my Jeep's been running fine, so I'm pretty sure on the internals that's where it matters But honestly if you're on a budget and you need an oil change Walmart get the Fram filter and you'll be fine But if you're on a budget, I mean that's an option. I've been using conventional oil, but we're actually gonna change over to This synthetic blend and to make you guys happy Mopar filter You need a 16 millimeter socket to remove the bolt underneath a common thing on these is this cap it breaks I actually replaced mine I think I got this from AutoZone and it's a lot better than the one that comes on their stock so we're gonna loosen up the cap and also loosen up the bolt there that we can get the oil drain dude it's super black is it yeah that's not it coca-cola baby mm, what a as you can tell, I need an oil change. Wow, that's so bad. Luckily, we did not make a mess. Yeah, I was definitely due for an oil change. I have my Jeep to remind me at 3,500 miles, but it's been probably like 4,500. Oh, the wind. Oh, no. <laughs> I made a mess. Fuck. <laughs> Give me some towels or something. Try not to get oil everywhere, guys. Fine. <laughs> it's okay, I'm at Chris's driveway. <laughs> Sheesh, look at how black that oil is. It's like Coca-Cola. Anyways, it honestly helps to have a lift kit on your Jeep to be able to fit there underneath, no problem. So now we got the oil out, we're gonna do the oil filter, remove that, let that drain, and then put on the new stuff. I bet you guys are happy to see me take this off. Okay, so we're using this high mileage oil. 10W30 synthetic blend, so it's not fully synthetic. Usually on the 4.0s, so from what I've seen online, people say conventional is the way to go, but I want to try something new and see how it handles. There it is. There it is. Damn, what a pro. And you're gonna want about six quarts, uh, and then you know, check the level. Woo! Never mind about the pro. Okay, so I put the six quarts in there, and it still needs about half a quart more. So I'm gonna go to the store and buy some, but for now we're gonna focus on tie rod end. So I'm changing out the passenger side tie rod end, which is the right outer, because I'm getting a, like a clicking noise from this side from that tie rod. So I'm gonna change it out, and hopefully that fixes my like sloppy steering that I have at the moment. So just a little heads up, I did order some steering parts and they should be here in a couple weeks. They're on back order right now. So since they're on back order for a couple weeks, I'm just gonna change the tie rod end and hopefully that does the job for now until I get the steering set up. The suspension's almost complete. I'm gonna switch gears and focus on ends and stuff. So uh, if you guys have any recommendations for like headers or exhaust, I wanna change the exhaust from the headers down. The whole, the whole exhaust pretty much. The one that I have has holes in it and it's not good. So if you guys have any recommendations, just uh, comment down below or you can message me on Instagram at Nodra Off Road. I'll respond there too. So let me show you the clicking that I'm talking about from the tie rod. And these tie rods, I did change less than a year ago. So it's kind of crazy that they're already bad, but let me show you what I'm talking about. Uh, so I guess you can't hear it, but you can kind of see the movement, the play. There's some play there, as you can tell. So we're gonna go ahead and replace that. Also, if you guys have recommendations for motor mounts, let me know down in the comments as well, because mine are shot, as you can see. Taking it off, and honestly, it's coming out on its own. I think it, <laughs> I think it is really, really bad. It feels really loose, doesn't have any resistance, really. So here are both of the tie rod ends. I don't remember where I got this one. I don't know if it was at O'Reilly's or Auto's one. I think it was O'Reilly's, but less than a year. Look at this, look at this play. This one's all tight. Uh, so if you're gonna buy some tie rod ends, I suggest going to AutoZone. This one looks a lot better than this one for sure. All right, so we went and changed out the tie rod end. It's definitely a lot more stiff, so can't wait to drive it. Just because I don't wanna cut up the tires. Behind the fender liner, there's this pinch weld here. So I'm gonna hammer down the bottom here just so it doesn't get um, into the tires and cut it up. Okay, so that pinch weld is hammered down, so it's not gonna cut up my tires. And also hammered down right there, just in case, so it doesn't rub if it gets close when I turn. Okay, so we're finally gonna go test it out. I ended up taking the plastic piece from the bottom uh, just so it wouldn't rub on the tire and then I hammered it in here and then that piece of metal that was back there but I put the liner back on and up here too I kind of tucked the liner and then screwed it in there and I cut the bumper too to give you know a little bit more clearance there so yeah let's go test it out so it's been a couple days since I 
did all the work to the Jeep. Been running good with the semi-synthetic oil, so that's great. Also, I cut the front end and that later that day, I didn't record it, but I took it off-roading and it, it didn't rub. It actually was good. And that's with the sway bars disconnected as well. I was actually surprised. I was expecting these to rub since I didn't cut. One thing I did notice with the shocks, since it has the extension on the bottom and the top, I will have to add a one inch spacer because this shock is, it was bottoming out when I was off-roading. But uh, I mean, other than that, it's not rubbing for the moment. So we are good to go there. And then with that one inch spacer, it'll give me that space so I don't have to uh, trim the fender. So that's great because I didn't want to trim it. <laughs> also, something coming very soon, NajarOffRoad.com. Just letting you guys know. And here's a little sneak peek for NajarOffRoad.com. Let me know what you guys think. Anyways, I hope you guys like this video. And if it did help you out, share it with a friend. That helps me out a lot. Leave a comment down below and a like. I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace.